Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is John Horn, and he is CEO over at Stub Group. John, welcome to the show. Adam, thank you so much for having me. All right, John, this is big, big topic. So we're going to be talking about digital marketing. We're going to be talking about Google ads. We're going to be talking about how you help clients and what people should be looking out for. And I guess just to get us kicked off here, how'd you get into advertising? Like where'd all that begin for you? Just advertising in general and digital. Yeah. Back in the day, really, well, been about over a, a decade ago in that range is mm-hmm. when we started Subgroup. And when we started Subgroup really focused from day one on Google advertising and other pay-per-click platforms. Was that your first, by the way? Was this your first four way into digital and into advertising? Largely, yes. For that, you know, I'd done some, mm. some email marketing, some things here and there. And so the reason really wanted to get into digital advertising and Google and Facebook and so so forth is because we saw so many brands, you know, moving from traditional advertising over to digital, mm. to, to digital advertising. And there is this massive need, still is, always will be, a massive need for mm-hmm. people who know what they're doing to steward that ad spend as people are trying to figure out, okay, what on earth does you know, digital advertising mean? Where can we spend our money? How do we track the success of it? So forth and so on. Mm-hmm. And so we started with that goal of, all right, how do we help businesses figure out those things? And and very intentionally, I use that word steward because that's what we believe we are. We are the stewards of the budgets of our clients trying to spend Mm -hmm. it as effectively as possible and then also show them through good reporting tracking the success or hopefully not lack thereof (laughs) of how that that Mm -hmm. spend is being spent yeah what are some of the and obviously only so much that we can do in you know in a podcast episode but when you start thinking about high return you know ad campaigns and even just kind of wrapping your head around that especially for new clients or otherwise like where does that conversation begin Generally, it begins around targeting. It is, all right, who, who is your target audience? And don't just tell me anybody in the world. You know, let's talk about you know, truly who is the most I work likely. With biz- but I work with business owners, John. That's not enough. People that have businesses. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, every small business owner. Like, all right, no, it's Everyone know, often an early planet. conversation. <laughs> exactly. It's about honing down. It's about identifying, okay, well, you know, let's say maybe theoretically every small business is someone who could purchase your service. Cool. Yeah. Well, who is purchasing currently? You know, what are the patterns we can identify? Is it geographic? Mm. Is it a particular need, a particular use case, whatever? And so let's figure out what's working well already for you in your business and who are your best customers based upon that. And then awesome. Mm-hmm. How do we replicate that? How do we identify other businesses or consumers who match those patterns, who are searching for those things, who are expressing those needs, and then how do we communicate to them that you are the best fit to meet those needs? Where do you find in the early stages that people often go wrong in this step? Like, where's the challenge there? I would say a lot of businesses... Very common, I'll see, either on our, our paid social channels or just when mm-hmm. people reach out to us mm-hmm. looking for help is, well, I, I tried that already and it didn't work. You know, they could be talking about Google mm-hmm. or Facebook or fill in the blank. And mm-hmm. that's you know, it's often true. They, they tried some advertising campaigns on a platform. They didn't see good results. And so they say, oh, mm-hmm. this platform's not for me. But the problem is the platforms, it's, you know, it's really, really easy to waste money on the platforms because yeah. uh, it's really easy to spend money. And unless what you're doing and you have really someone really carefully structuring things, monitoring things, reporting on things, et cetera, yeah. you know, you're just contributing to Google or Facebook's quarterly earnings. And so that's that's often a mistake, I would say, is businesses who try to prove the concept of a particular advertising channel without really giving it the opportunity of having someone or an agency mm-hmm. or an in-house team member or whatever who has the skill set of giving them the best shot for success on that platform. Mm-hmm. Just breaking it down a little bit further. So let's just say we, if we were taking, and I know this isn't a perfect roadmap. There's a lot of things in between. So for everybody listening, I'm obviously jumping around a little bit. I, not, nothing's that simple. We get that. But just kind of drilling down a little bit further, are there some nuances or maybe differences between how you are approaching, whether it's B2B versus B2C? Like, let's go a little bit further into that side of things. Yeah, absolutely. So 
there are quite a few differences. And there's a lot of similarities and a lot of differences mm-hmm. between you know, business to business, digital advertising campaigns, and, and business to consumer. I would say one of the biggest things that differentiates them is that, generally speaking, with business to business, it depends on, on what your business is, but often it's a little more of a needle in the haystack where there may be a lot of consumers, residential business out there that are searching for similar things as businesses might be searching for, but that obviously are not your audience. And so a lot of digital advertising is about excluding mm. people, not just finding the right people, but trying to prevent other people who might be searching the same keywords as a business owner, but who are yeah. never going to purchase your SaaS product or whatever. And so trying to make sure that you're not wasting so much money on the wrong people that mm-hmm. even if you are hitting some mm-hmm. of the right people, it's not a good ROI. So that, that targeting yeah. and figuring out, okay, where are people spending their time in the business world? How are they searching is important. And there's a lot of ways that you can go about trying to craft your ad messaging and approaches to, you know, mm-hmm. to try and, and get in front of the right people and keep the wrong people away. I think mm-hmm. probably another big difference is sales cycle time as well. So there's exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, in the B2B space, the sales cycle between someone clicking through and actually purchasing a service or product mm-hmm. or hiring you is often longer than on the consumer side of things. And so you've got to take that sales cycle into account as well when you're running advertising campaigns and analyzing performance and judging, hey, is this campaign working or not? Well, if it takes mm. you know, six months for you to turn a lead into a customer, you probably shouldn't decide three months in whether or not the campaign is working if you are yeah. you know, getting leads into your pipeline. Obviously, if you're not getting any leads, then it's a moot point. But uh, you've got to sure. give yourself enough time to really get through that sales cycle and identify on the B2B side whether or not something is, is working well. Now, you're, correct me if I'm off on this, the company specializes in Google Ads, correct? Yeah, I would say Google Ads is our number one focus. And then in addition mm-hmm. to that, we also manage a number of other platforms like Meta and Microsoft and so forth. What's interesting, like what what's on your vantage point? Like we always hear about updates and other things that are going on, whether it's Google Ads or other way, otherwise, like you've been a decade over a decade in on this, work with many, many clients. Let's say you stewarded a lot of assets in your day already and, you know, with much more to come. What like excites you right now? Like what's on your dashboard or what's interesting to you that's happening in, in advertising right now in digital? I said the billion dollar question right now is how... All of the I like that. language What's learning that? models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of these. I like that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's about how will or won't user behavior and searching for things change with things like ChatGPT. Mm. With Google is in the process right now of making some significant changes to what you know the search engine results page looks like, incorporating their Gemini and different things. And so there's a lot of questions mm-hmm. in the marketplace. Okay, how are people, is, is Google search going to remain the number one place that most people go to start their search for something? Is it going mm-hmm. to be, you know, 20% is going out of ChatGPT or two other places? And so it's exciting because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, all I care about is connecting our clients to customers. So I don't really care mm-hmm. where they're spending their time. If that's on Google search, if that's on ChatGPT, wherever, I want to figure out how can we make that connection. And I'm yeah. confident that the paid you know, advertising side of things is going to continue to play an important role in that because every company wants to make money. <laughs> and generally speaking, they realize mm-hmm. they can make money by charging businesses to make that connection to their audience. So it's really, I think, it's And those are the fundamentals that go back to newspapers. I mean, how far back do we want to go, right? Like how as far back as we want to go, that's, that's the fundamental way of how we add value, right? <laughs> 100 percent yeah it's one of the things i talk with the team which is look there's these tools we use right now you know google ads mm-hmm. facebook whatever the tools are always going to change they've changed massively over the last decade things have come and gone the way things look like they do now are not going to look the same way in 10 years but mm-hmm. companies will always need to connect with customers and mm. if that is how we view our business then we can mm-hmm. adapt and evolve with the methods and tools that are out there to accomplish that purpose yeah. And I feel like, and I don't know, I, I've just seen for companies, especially in advertising or otherwise that are staying in front of it, like to me, 
what has happened a lot of times is it's expanded the market and like it making it easier has even just educated people. I can think of the early days of even a Facebook and we don't do any advertising or stuff like that. But I just think about like when I was contributing to their quarterly, you know, they made it really easy, right? Like, so they made it easy and what we, and we put some money into it at one point and, you know, we do other things, but then podcasting is our main thing. But I just mean like the market expanded at that point because I was as a, as a small business owner was willing willing to like to, ex to experiment and explore. And if I felt that we want to go further along that line, then we would have done good to hire an agency like yours or, or any others that, that specialize in that if we felt that that was what we're going to meet our need. But had the market not expanded to where that was on my like, on my vantage point, it, it would have never happened. So I think back when I look, when mm -hmm. I think about that, I think about the yellow pages, right? Like how long, and the mm -hmm. yellow page is still out there. The yellow page is yeah. still, like people still have yellow pages. People <laughs> still have, like if, they're, if there's still people doing that, like it's not going to disappear. It's just going to get bigger. <laughs> exactly. It will, it will get bigger and there'll be more opportunities and also more opportunities for differentiations as there's, mm. as there's more ways that people find that information. If you look at now, versus when the Yellow Pages was the way to find you know, business yeah. local to you. There's so many yeah. more ways now you can find and therefore so many more opportunities for businesses to get mm -hmm. a cutting edge and get in the right placement. Yeah. I want to jump around a little bit here. So talk to me about, I mean, a company building high performing teams. Like what's some of your secret to keeping the team together? I mean, we've done a lot, a lot of things just for context for somebody that may listen to this far into the future. We're 2024 May, we're post pandemic. Like, like you've been in business obviously 10 years. So you've already weathered multiple storms, like, like building high performing teams. Like talk to me about like some of your secrets or keys to success there. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of experiments over time. We've, mm. we've done the good, the bad and the ugly and trying to build a, build a good team. Definitely learned, learned some things along the way and, and still, learning every day. I think some of the things that we've learned are schooling, education is really not a focus, especially in the digital advertising space for me. I don't mm -hmm. really care what your schooling was or what your degree was because you can't learn in school what we do currently, generally speaking. I mean, you yeah. can learn yeah. high level important things about running businesses, about marketing ideas and concepts, etc. But you're not going to know how to sit down and run a Google Ads campaign. And if someone puts out a course, you know, about that, by the time that course is published, it's probably <laughs> not going to be accurate anymore because they've changed things since then. We're very much focused on experience and you know, people who already kind of understand the platforms that we're looking to manage on behalf of our clients and try and bring on people who mm -hmm. have got some track record of success and also looking at their, their character. So integrity is something that's very important to us. We are transparent with our clients. We don't mislead them, fudge numbers, things like that. And so it's mm -hmm. very important to find people who are going to take that approach and be transparent internally and externally. If they make a mistake, own up to it. And it's important, too, mm -hmm. to create a culture where if someone makes a mistake, it's not about, hey, let's go scream at that person, point fingers and make them feel terrible. It's about, okay, yeah. you know, this mistake, own up to it. How do we make sure we don't make this mistake again? And mm -hmm. as long as we're making sure we're not continuing to make the same mistakes and always getting better and improving, that's what I want to see. And so by building mm -hmm. that type of a culture, it makes people willing to think, be more transparent and say, hey, I did this thing. How do we fix this? As opposed to you know, trying to hide those problems or issues or mistakes. And then they balloon into much greater problems that have to be dealt with. That's great. Well, I just have to say it has been a lot of fun having you on here, John. Lots more we could talk about, but we're about out of time for this particular episode. That being said, I know that people that are listening are going to have more questions. They might even want you to check out a campaign that they're running or otherwise. How do people connect with your group and learn more about Subgroup? Yeah, best place to connect would be through our website, stubgroup.com. You can check us out on there, and uh, we offer we call our free consultation. So we'll take a look at advertising you're currently doing, tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about it and how we might do it differently. Uh, or if you're just getting into the space, we'll kind of put an action plan together for you and give you some ideas on how we might start digital advertising for your business. Amazing. And for everybody listening, we'll put that information in the show notes so that you can just head right on over and 
speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind why they do what they do, what we can all learn from that so that we can all grow together. If that sounds interesting to you, we welcome you. Hit that subscribe button. This is a daily show. Each and every day, we're putting out new episodes and new entrepreneurs, and we don't want you to miss a thing. So again, hit that subscribe button. And John, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much, Adam.